What's up guys and welcome back or to the channel. Um, we left off exactly like this in the last video. Uh, radius arms in, bottom bag uh, mount is in. Uh, that, that's as far as we got. It was such a uh, such a, a challenge to do this kind of part of the lift. But uh, now that we're there, literally just got to drill some holes, put the upper uh, bag mount in, throw the bags in, steering uh, steering stabilizers, adjustable track bar, and uh, I'm gonna get the Synergy one on order because that that's just not gonna end up going back in. So we'll get the Synergy one on order. We can uh, swap this out, give us more stability in our steering anyway, and um, yeah. So uh, that should be straight. And other than that, guys, not much more to it. Uh, we're gonna see how far we can get today. Hopefully we can at least complete the front, finish the front and start the back. I think that'd be super sweet. So what we're looking for here, honestly, are our upper bag mounts. We got our shock mounts and then the uh, resi mounts are somewhere in here. That'll uh, get our uh, shocks to mount up in here. And then the uh, resi itself will kind of sit right here uh, and it kind of slides in underneath that upper bag mount. Now that I think about it. So good thing I reminded myself because we're gonna put that in there. I do not want to forget that. However, without further ado, let's just get to it and uh, try and knock this out. So yesterday we didn't get, well, two days ago actually, we didn't get any further than this. That reason being is that um, these plates were actually welded incorrectly. So our lower bag mounts do not fit, so we can't really even finish the installation of this. Pretty much this tab is supposed to be in the front. And on the, the bag mount we had in here, that tab was in the back. So this one's actually for the driver's side, and as you can see, it's angled like this. So pretty much we need the rev the tops, I guess, were welded on the wrong sides or something, I don't know. But this thing should be angled the other way with the tab in the front, and uh, it would line up perfectly. I'm gonna, put a pic uh, I'm gonna put a picture on the screen and show you what we were dealing with, how far off, like that, that plate was offset, that the bag would not connect, so I gave Kellerman a call. And uh, you know, they got it all figured out. They got two new ones coming. So that's gonna be a minute on that. However, instead of us just sitting here not doing anything else to this lift, we got a lot of stuff to powder coat. So something I probably should have filmed, but it was snowing and cold and just a mess and these things were heavy. We went home uh, yesterday. We picked up our oven. We picked up our Eastwood compressor. Man, that thing is heavy. We also have one of two 220 outlets live right now. We need, we're waiting on a breaker on the other one, but they're both installed. Uh, however, here's our situation. This plug does not meet or, or does not match up to, I did tell the guy to put these in here, but the more I think about it, I probably should have did one that matches an oven and another one that matches, you know, like welders, compressors, stuff like that. So this 220 outlet, great. But we can't plug the oven in. So I just got back from Home Depot actually and uh, time to do some sketchy shit. I got another oven plug. I got an oven plug, dryer plug, whatever. I got a new plug like harness. However, instead of that, I'm gonna snip the top off and like reverse it so it's a female plug. And on the other end of it, I'm gonna connect the plug I got the other day which matches that. So we'll be able to plug the cord into the outlet and it'll convert it to the oven plug. Um, which, well, that's like a that's like a dryer plug, not an oven plug. However, um, yeah, then we can run our extension cord and uh, pretty much plug the plug I have into this. And then on the other end, we'll have our new little adapter to run our oven. Let's get to it. Let's get to uh, sandblasting and uh, powder coating. We're gonna take the front diff off, um, get that coated. 
I brought the uh, Banks diff cover, we gotta two-tone that. Oh, and our light bar, we gotta sandblast that, powder coat that, get that reassembled, and we could actually probably maybe throw that in. Let's get to it. guys well that was a mess so oh my goodness this is crazy um so obviously at home and all that stuff while well, this is cooking let me give you a sneak peek this light bar looks freaking snazzy oh yeah guys that looks so good oh i got about 10 minutes left on that however um i, I all my air fittings i don't know where they're at uh my regulator i don't know where it's at so i'm literally it, like that was supposed to be a low pressure with a little bit of air left in the tank spray, but somehow it came out probably 30 PSI and look at the mess we made. Not, the big of a, not that big of a deal. You just sweep up the powder and get rid of it. But um, I ended up not sandblasting the front diff cover for the simple reason of, it'll probably cost me about 10 bucks in sand to do so, <laughs> or to, like, I don't know. This, this sandblaster works great. However, it also is like kind of finicky, um, but, I'd probably use about $10 in sand. I'd sit there, I, you know, my ears hurt. I've got sand in my ears. I've got sand in my hair. Um, yes, I could probably get a sandblasting cabinet and like it'd be so much easier, but we don't have one of those. So it was like 40 bucks of new front cover, already, you know, raw metal. I don't gotta freaking blast it or do anything crazy. 
uh, it's just ready to spray. So that'll be here in the next couple days and then I'll just wait to put the steering stabilizers on the truck until then. Not too difficult, but we'll, we'll just wait on that. However, the next thing is already, I'm pretty sure not only I outgrew the garage at home, but I'm pretty sure I outgrew this shop this day already. It's just simply like, I, I need more room, more usable wall room like this. Um, even like, it's nice to have the garages like this, but you need more usable wall room on that side and that side of the doors. I also need a dumpster. There's so much just random crap here, but also like, as you can see, I mean, that's all the Kelderman stuff there. Those are the fender flares for the, you know, or that's the fender liners for the banana ramp. But we got our, you know, inflatable paint booth. We got the exhauster that needs trash, some banks boxes. We just got stuff everywhere and nowhere to put it because of usable wall space. So it's crazy that you can outgrow things so, so quickly. And, you know, it's been a month and a half and we outgrew this shop. Um, It'll be a lot better once this lift is done and um, you know the interior's in because all you know this whole corner will be reopened again and uh, all of this won't be here and that truck obviously will be out of here but at the moment with the projects we're doing it's like whoo I can see <laughs> I can see how close we are to outgrowing this already. guys I actually just popped it out of the oven um, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something else in a second here however this thing is banging uh, I guarantee so many of you are gonna start powder coating your light bars and stuff it was quite complicated getting the, the glue and the residue and the solder and everything out uh, I'm just gonna let this thing cool and uh, we'll get back here in the morning put it together I'm gonna show you this thing really quick though um, <laughs> oh my goodness This thing looks crazy, y'all. Straight up, red light bar gonna be in between the tow hooks on the banana ram. Look at these, even the end brackets. Oh yes, and this one. Oh yes, that looks so good. <laughs> so in what I have to say, without the pressure regulator, it makes a very large, very large mess. Um, because you're spraying like 30 PSI, not five, and it's like a light dusting and all the powder attracts. I'm wasting a lot of powder. Um, it's everywhere. Obviously, powder is fine. It blows off and it cleans up easy. But I'm making a mess. I'm wasting a lot of powder. I don't want to sit there and go through and powder coat the bank's cover and, you know, waste all that. I'll just find the pressure regulator at home, bring it here, uh, connect it, and get that stuff done. That's what makes most sense to me. There's no point in me doing it i thought i could do it and get it done but to me it's just like let's just wait and do it right um i power washed my truck when i got in here but uh, i'm gonna leave today and when i come back tomorrow uh, the water will dry and i'll blow all the powder out of here and we'll be fine and hopefully when i get home the kelderman uh the uh, kelderman lower bag mounts will be here and we can get this thing put together and finished up as well um and then i've got the uh, front diff cover coming ordered one so then i'll be able to powder that too and get that done as well and everything will be straight but even the fins back here they look so good this was probably one of my better ideas i've ever had uh, it's gonna be interesting putting it back together but definitely definitely worth doing uh it's gonna add that little touch of whoa how'd you do that so uh can't wait to get that in here obviously the uh, lollipop red looks amazing and then uh, obviously our lollipop red light bar will be in there which will be sweet so guys i apologize for the confusing crazy video and all of that but in this instance, uh, again, just being real with you guys, figured out the parts were wrong. Uh, it didn't make any sense. So uh, figured out it was wrong and we gotta wait. We do gotta wait to get those new, uh, you know, those new pieces in. I tried to take advantage of my situation and you know, bring the sandblaster here, sandblast this. We did it, it's good. But again, again, with the move of bringing everything to the shop um, and stuff, I forget things here and there like pressure regulator, uh, I only brought one, you know, one bottle for the powder. I didn't bring my blow gun, any of that. Um, so I apologize for the confusing video, but it's just straight up real life, real everything. Uh, giving it to you straight, not fabricating anything. 
Um, this, is, this is what happens when you're building trucks like this. So, not trying to hide anything, just being real with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, shoot a thumbs up. If you haven't been here before, please get down there, click subscribe. While you're down there, tap that notification bell, click all, so you don't miss out on any of, uh, tap that notification bell, click all, so you don't miss out on any of our uploads. Drop me a comment down below, take care, and I'll see you guys very shortly in the next one. We should be able to finish the Kelderman lift on this. Oh, we also got our brown suede, our, our starlights and everything, and my audio will be here tomorrow, so everything is set to uh, get this thing rolling. So, it's gonna be awesome. Catch you guys next time.